Hello, today we will be creating a scheme using Starlog v4. This scheme will be uh, showing how to create a scheme for an NRT unit. All other Unidata systems and loggers can be created using the same Starlog v4 functionality. Firstly, we will go to Scheme Editor. In Scheme Editor, we will have new function buttons down the side. To create a new scheme, we will click New. As you can see, there are many Unidata loggers listed here. Today we will be creating a scheme for an NRT model with 8 meg memory. Double click on the NRT with the 8 meg memory. We now have a new list of functions down the side. First step is to go to settings. Under the settings window, we can configure our scan rate. The scan rate is usually used for averaging values over a period of time. It also wakes up the logger every time during this scan. For general settings, the scan rate is usually set at 5 or 10 seconds. Today we will set the scan rate at 10 seconds. In the scheme description, we can describe where our unit will be located or any description you would like. For example, we are, today we will, be, we will be creating a weather station scheme. In the communications box, we also have the communications ports we will be connecting to. This can be found in the uh, system parameters in Device Manager on your computer. Today we will be connecting to COM port 4, so we can select COM port 4 here. All the COM ports that are on the PC will be shown up in this window. If they are not shown up in this window, we can click the Add button and add a COM port that is on the PC. The standard board rate on a NEON unit and all other Unidata loggers is 9600 boards, so this can be kept as is. Once the scan rate is set, we can then go to the Instruments button located on the side. As you can see, there is a list of many instruments here. These are all Unidata instruments. If your instrument is not located in this section, you can add one of the instruments and modify accordingly. In the drop-down list, you'll see two types of instrument libraries, NEWA library and the PDL trans library. The PDL trans library is the main library used and all instruments should be selected from here. Today we'll be, as stated before, we'll be creating a weather station instrument. Firstly, we'll add an SDI-12 instrument. As you can see, this is located here, so we can just double click in the instrument. This is now added over here on the right hand side of the screen. We can double click on the SDI-12 transducer generic instrument. Here we can either create our own instrument or select from a drop down list. In the drop down list, we have many instruments that have already been pre set up. In this circumstance, we will cl click on Vaisala Weather Station. As you can see, once the Vaisala Weather Station has been clicked on, it has automatically populated the screen so all the values can be read. In this section, there is a refresh rate of the log interval fixed interval, continuous and manual. Today we will be selecting log interval. This indicates that every six seconds before a log interval, the SDI-12 weather station instrument will be read. Note that the read time must be a multiple of your scan rate. For example, we selected a scan rate of 10 seconds. So our read time must be either 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, etc. If the read time is not set to a multiple of the scan rate, 
then the instrument will not be read correctly. Here we will set it to 10 seconds. Once this is done, we can select OK. Another instrument we can add is a temperature sensor. The Unidata temperature sensor is known as a LM34 or a 6535A. Here we will select it here. As you can see, now this has been added to the right hand of the screen. This has been automatically set up as well. Once this is set up, we can either change the name to something else we want. We can also set the units to something else we want and the analog channel that we are connecting the temperature sensor to. If we also click on calc scaling, we can modify our output. Now, if, our, if we were using our own temperature sensor and it had a different range, we could change the range here. For example, our temperature sensor might be only a 0 to 1 volt input, so we could change this to 0 to 1 volt or 1000 millivolts. We could also change our sensor minimum and maximum. For example, for 0 volts we might have 0 degrees Celsius and for 1 volt we might have 100 degrees Celsius. Once we've changed this we can click OK and our multiplier and offset will be automatically changed according to the scaling we have just done. The format allows us to determine how many decimal places we require for our uh, recording of our data channel. For example, for 100 degrees Celsius we might want 100.0 or 100.1 degrees Celsius. If we want more resolution we can add an extra zero and we might get 100.12 degrees Celsius depending on the accuracy of the instrument. Once we are happy with this we can click OK. In our NRT scheme we always also tell the customer to record the battery voltages as these are critical when checking NEON and checking if the current battery voltage is good or not good as this is a main concern when the units are placed in the field. To select the battery we can click on the NRT battery. This is automatically added and there is no need to change anything here. When we click on it, it will just say that we have added the internal and external battery voltages. We can click OK here. So this scheme now contains a weather station, a temperature sensor and, how to, and for us to record our battery voltages which are connected to the NRT. The next step is to go to our log buffer. In our log buffer, we select what we would like to record. There are many options. We can select raw, which is the value that is recorded at the time of the log interval. So for example, if we had our long log interval of 5 minutes, then our raw value will be the reading taken at the 5 minute point. Our minimum value would be the minimum value of all the 10 second readings over the 5 minute e interval. Our maximum value would be the maximum value taken of the 10 second intervals over the 5 minute interval. The total is the total of all the 10 second readings over a 5 minute interval and the average is the average of the 10 second readings over a 5 minute interval. In this case we will select RAW as we are only reading an SDI-12 instrument once every log. Here we can see that if we click these values it is automatically added to the log size. So our log size will increase every time we click on what we want to record. For temperature, as this is being read as an analog, we will click this as average. And ex internal and external supply at the five minute interval. With an 8 meg scheme, the buffer size of the NRT is approximately 8 megabytes. There is also a setting of linear and circular. With NRT schemes, it is set to circular. This indicates that once the memory is full, it will wrap around again and start overriding previous memory. This is always done with an NRT scheme as the data is sent to the server at a predefined interval. 
and then this is saved on the server. If you are using another logger such as a star logger which is not sent, does not send data to the NEON server, we can click on linear. This would indicate that once the memory is full it will stop logging. We can also click on auto order. If we click on auto order we can set where our data will be defined in our unloaded file. For example, if you are using Excel, this would indicate that wind direction would be in the first column, wind speed in the second column, temperature in the third column, etc, etc. If we wanted to change this, we can select the channel and then move it up or down accordingly. This would mean that now temperature would be in the first column of Excel. In the scheme, we can also add events. Events are done to record if an event has been triggered or if you would like to trigger events. The log while event must be always there so that logging is always done. In this section, we will add an event just to show how it works. So in an event, we have now added an event. For example, we could say temperature high. When the temperature goes above 30 degrees, we can trigger an event. Note that the description and the name can be anything you would like. Here we have many events. For this event, we would say, if the temperature is greater than 30 degrees, then we would like to trigger an event. We select our temperature channel, and then we type in the value that we would like to trigger. So 30 degrees on our temperature channel. We have outputs on the NRT, so we can trigger an open collector output, for example, if we wanted to turn on a light or a siren, or we can initiate a read. Anything you would like here, you can do. For this one, we will not select anything. In this section, we will select that we would like to force the log to main buffer. This indicates that when the temperature will go above 30 degrees, then the NRT will start logging every 10 seconds according to the scan rate instead of logging every 5 minutes. Once this uh, event is not true anymore, then the logging will go back to its 5 minute point. This has completed our writing of the scheme. So once we have done this, we can save our scheme. So on the side, we click our Save button. In the file name, we can call the scheme anything we like up to eight characters. So for example, we'll call it Weather1. Once this is done, we can hit Save. The DOS box will pop up saying that our scheme is saving and it says that we have completed the scheme without any errors. We can click we can push any button we like and then it will say compile complete without any errors. Once we have done this we can close our windows and we can make sure that the scheme has been saved by clicking on the select button. We can see that we have now created a new scheme called weather1. We can click on this and this scheme name will now be located at the bottom of our screen. This has completed our NRT scheme generation.